So this is what happened. After almost 20 years of being a PC user, Pro Tools on PC, I switched to Mac. <laughs> You've probably seen the previous video, not even a month ago, of me building my new super spec'd out PC and having all kinds of problems since the beginning. But that wasn't even the main problem. I had bigger problems, believe it or not. And that wasn't the main reason as to why I decided to switch to Mac. Anyway, in this video, I'm gonna tell you everything, the good, the bad, and the ugly of switching from Windows to Mac for audio. And which one is better? Let's go. Hello everyone, welcome back to Miss Best TV. Hope you guys are having a great day. Before we start, check the info box down below for free plugins, special discount and offers, and visit the new website mixbestv.com for all the mix and mastering courses start to finish on many different genres. In there, you can also book mix and mastering with me, private lessons and mix consultations. If you wanna access the exclusive videos here on YouTube, click the join button, become a Mix Plus TV member, get all the perks. And don't miss Bella Kelly's new single and official videos called Felony, available on all streaming platform and the videos here on YouTube. YouTube. If you have questions about that mix, let me know in the comments down below. Finally, if the videos are helping you, you want to support the channel, please consider using the super thanks or grab some merch. Let's get to the video. All right, Mac Studio is officially the new main machine here at the studio. Everything is run through this computer. And let me give you my specs. This is a M2 Ultra. I upgraded the internal memory to four terabytes and the RAM to 128 gigabytes should last for a little bit. First of all, special thanks to two of my dearest friends, Keith Ross and Trev Wright, which helped me tremendously in doing the transition. Let me start by saying that even if I upgraded the internal hard drive from one terabyte, which is standard, to four terabyte, I still needed a lot more storage, a lot more hard drives, because of course I have all the Pro Tools projects for my clients and samples, and then I have to keep some project here, like archives, so I need a ton of hard drive and a ton of hard drive space. So let's start with what accessory I bought for the computer and what kind of setup I'm running here. The first one is a Matthias Aluminum RGB keyboard. I really, really like this keyboard. Low profile, just how I like them. It's meant to be exactly the same as the Apple keyboard. I really like the look of this. I like the RGB, totally worth it for me. This was Keith's suggestion. Regarding the mouse, that was the first good news. My Logitech trackball works perfectly on Mac. I'm not a fan of the Mac mouse and and definitely I need to use my trackball, otherwise I get really bad forearm pain and that was a really good news. Also, I have the right click and nothing changed that way. That was really a big help in me transitioning from Windows to Mac. My physical ergonomics didn't really change at all. Both of them were plug and play, no problem whatsoever. Because I had just bought a bunch of brand spanking new parts for the PC, I had four hard drives, two sticks and two SDD for a total of about 10 terabytes, which obviously I wanted to keep and I wanted to try to use here. And this was super easy. I had a CalDigit Thunderbolt USB dock to which I could connect these drives after buying enclosure I'll put the model here. These are for the sticks. These are for the 2.5 inches. They are super fast. They were super cheap. Once I put those drives in the enclosures, I connected it to the CalDigit hub, recognized immediately as soon as I turn on the computer. That was really good news. So these four drives are super fast. I can run Pro Tools projects from there, samples, anything I need. I usually keep one drive for each function, actually two for Pro Tools project, recent, older, and then samples, and then other things. Then I'm running two extra hard drive just for storage and redundancy for pictures, documents, and then I copy everything to the other hard drive just in case one fails. These are uh, 16 terabyte each, again, connected via USB. I bought a pretty big USB hub, self-powered, I think it's 16 ports. It's this one, I'll put the link down below, and everything worked perfectly. And this is the first thing that I really liked about Mac versus PC. So I have a ton of USB devices, USB controllers, and USB everything. I have all the TC effects controller. I have the clarity. I have the fader. I have the console one. I have the West Audio gear. All these are connected USB. And one thing, one of the problems that I was having with the new PC was how difficult it was 
to have all these USB recognized by the computer. First of all, I had to change ports a billion times to make uh, the PC trying to recognize the devices, even sometimes going back to the first one that I tried. And that was really annoying. When I got almost everything to work, the TC clarity there wasn't working. The computer was not seeing it. I tried all the ports that I had and it was not working to the point that I thought it was broken. I hooked it up to my laptop, saw it immediately. That was another annoyance that kind of pushed me to the limit. And I found out that on PC, that device needed to be connected on a 2.0 port, which in the new computer, they are not present in the motherboard at all and it wasn't working through the hub. The only way I could make it work is to plug it on the USB of the tower, the one that comes with the case. And it, that was like, why? It makes no sense, especially when on Mac, I can plug it anywhere. I can just use one big hub and everything works and everything worked right away. Now let's talk about the problems with the PC. Yes, as you know, the Thunderbolt compatibility was somewhat an issue, right? Because Thunderbolt 4 is not compatible with Thunderbolt 2 and 1, and that's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, some people had uh, success running old Thunderbolt PCIe cards in their computer. I don't wanna rely on something like that on a workaround. You need to make sure that you don't update the firmware. Some other people just, you know, some other where they don't have the header, so it didn't work. It was a hit or miss. I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna base my entire studio, which is my livelihood on something like that. It's too finicky for me, okay? But that wasn't even the main problem because with Motu, I could connect USB, and just be as good as ever. The two main problems were, number one, these new Intel CPUs, and I had the 14900KS, and before that I tried the 13900KS, they run extremely hot and they overheat and most important, they are unstable. I didn't want to believe it because it happened in past that I build my computers and people say, oh, this system is not stable, but if you optimize it and you don't overclock it and you run it as it's supposed to, I never had issues because this is the thing. I ran Windows and Pro Tools for almost 20 years with zero problem, zero problem, never had anything more than a hiccup here and there, okay? So I was perfectly fine. But this last generation is an absolute mess. At least it was for me. The computer was not overclocked. I tried both the uh, default settings, not the one that comes with the motherboard, which run the processor a lot hotter, but the Intel one. And then we also tried the one with the motherboard and we tried another bunch of things. Long story short, I couldn't open a five tracks project, a STEM mastering with no plugins, and that motherfucker was blue screening of death on me. And that was absolutely unacceptable for me. I am not gonna run, especially a brand new computer in the studio that is not stable. That's my number one priority. The other thing is fan noise. I've always built quiet PCs, so super quiet fans, quiet cases, everything with noise in mind. And so I did this time. I had the fractal torrent case. I changed all the fans to super quiet and the noise went down. And despite that, it was an absolute mess. Like I said, the processors run so hot and even putting all the fans at the bare minimum, it requires so much ventilation and so much cooling that the, the computer itself was way too noisy. And I thought I could stomach it. I thought I could just power through it and get used to it and it simply got worse and worse by the day and this is another big reason as to why i went mac when i heard the mac which you can't because it's completely silent my mind was kind of blown a little because that alone for me would have probably been enough to do the switch that's how annoying the noise was. And yes, you could have gone liquid cooling, but at that point, like I'm, I'm not in the business of building computers, right? I used to like build computers because it's fun to pick up parts. It takes a day to do it and it, everything works fine. Besides that, that's not my job. My job is mixing. I can't waste my time in troubleshooting and finding workarounds for something like this. It's not the time anymore for me. So noise and stability were the two biggest issues. Pair that with the Thunderbolt fiasco, 
that was an easy choice at that point. Now let's talk about the Mac. I had it for about eight, nine days and I already ran a couple of projects in it. I reinstalled everything and thank Trev for that magic app that he gave me that is a godsend for installing things on Mac. Uh, he'll probably make it public at some point. Right now it's like kind of an inside thing. It's absolutely amazing. But anyway, I installed everything in about a couple of days. I was at 90% and uh, everything worked fine. I connected the Mac Studio to my system, to my network, seen immediately. No glitches, no nothing. Once I installed the drivers, everything worked flawlessly. And that was such a relief. <laughs> and also I noticed one thing immediately when I installed everything and I went to open Pro Tools and open big projects. This machine is really fast. The loading time, even with a hardcore spec out computer, it just seems to use the power more efficiently. The, the loading time of all the plugins that I have when you turn on Pro Tools or even over a big project, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot of stuff. The Mac Studio is by far faster and smoother. Now, the big question, navigating the operating system, Windows versus Mac, especially because I've been on Windows for so long. Well, I kind of cheated a little bit because not only I have Mac at my other studio, at the Bunker Recorded Studio here in, in LA, but I also work with Mac at Dweezil Studio. And so I wasn't completely running blind. I had a little bit of experience, but nowhere near how fast or efficient or confident as I was on Windows. This was my biggest fear. How long is it gonna take me to find even the basic things, right? Because I don't know how to navigate the operating system. I wasn't too worried because at the end of the day, this is the studio computer. I don't do nothing other than using Pro Tools. And Pro Tools is exactly the same on Windows and Mac. Uh, the difference in shortcut, it literally took me two hours to wrap my head around it because it's literally like two or three keys that are swapped everything else is the same now the operating system it's kind of a whole different ball game but we are at day nine and i am fluent so if you are worried if you are on windows and you're thinking about switching to mac and you barely even touched mac or you haven't touched mac at all it's not as bad as you think it is to me, it was pretty smooth, I gotta be honest. And yes, of course, there's some things you're gonna have to either call your friend or Google. It's simple, like, how do I do this? But it takes five seconds. And I wanna say that it's probably harder to learn Windows if you're coming from Mac than the other way around. The one thing you need to keep in mind when you go from Windows to Mac is don't try to use the Mac operating system like you do with Windows. It's, it's different. There are a lot of similarities. You still copy, you still paste. For example, you can't cut a file on Mac. You have to copy and then you have to delete the other. It's kind of a safety thing, right? And, uh, and it, it's funny because at the end of the day, all these things make sense. While at first, the first day I was kind of annoyed because change is never, you know, not always pleasant. But then it starts making sense. It, it actually, there's a reason because Mac users were always so vocal about how good the Mac operating system is versus Windows, which, you know, in part they are right, in part they are not, because there, there are some very annoying things on the Mac operating system, I gotta be honest. But there are some annoying things on Windows as well. But this is to say, it makes sense and it's kind of a very fluid type of operating system. I personally didn't have any issue finding things or wrapping my head around or researching how to do something and it, it's very easy to learn. It was for me. And it has a couple of uh, productivity tricks let's put it this way, that really makes everything easier. Day number one, or probably first hour, I learned the command space shortcut, and you can search anything there. You don't need to, like window, to go on this, this folder with that folder, the other folder. And the latest versions of Windows, now I understand they try to do that. They try to go in that direction, but on Mac is much better integrated. On Windows, I never use the search function. On Mac, I use it all the time and it's like super easy. So little things like this, when you learn the basics and how to navigate from there on out is 
believe me, very, very simple. Now, I did not do a stress test on Pro Tools, and like I said, my machine is pretty freaking powerful, so I don't think I'm gonna hit, I, I wasn't hitting maximum CPU or maximum usage with the old PC, let alone with this one. I don't think I'll ever go probably over 50% or 60% of use even in 200 tracks project. But for what I've seen, everything, including Pro Tools, it's a lot snappier. It's a lot more reactive. I don't know if, if the, the software, of course, is the same, but the actual speed in loading, loading time is a big one. Uh, closing and reopening project, all of it seems a lot faster, even compared to the spec out PC that I got to work for, you know, three days before I wanted to set it on fire. So we're talking about the one uh, with the 14900KS. It's really a different kind of flow, as in Mac feels smooth, while the PC, even if it's fast, because it was fast, it kind of clunky. It's kind of like does things in blocks, right? As opposed to flow. So that's the feeling. The Thunderbolt dock, didn't need driver, didn't need nothing, just hook it up. The Mac Studio already has like four Thunderbolt ports, USB-C, USB, normal USB, and you can expand as much as you want, and that's amazing. The size of the thing, this thing is so small and it's so powerful, and it's so darn quiet. That is absolutely great. Now, let's talk about the bed. And of course, I know that the big deal with Mac is when they update the OS. I haven't been there yet, so I can't give you that kind of feedback, but I know a lot of people have problems when up upgrading and updating the OS plugins that are still not working on the new one and so on. We'll get, I will report the first time that I have to do that. But so far, so good. Everything, all of my plugins, all my machines, everything worked flawlessly. And I had one issue, which if you look at the screen there, I am kind of still dealing with it. What is it doing right now? It's coping files. And this was a bit of a nightmare. And I am very happy that I am beyond paranoid when it comes to files, whether it's my personal stuff, storage, or even more uh, Pro Tools project for clients. Because what happened is, of course, all my drives were formatted for Windows, including the SDD, including the sticks. So I knew already beforehand that I had to format them for Mac. So what I had to do is I had to buy a bunch of docs, connect those drives to my Windows laptop, and then transfers the files to a different drive, mount the drives, SDD and sticks on the Mac, and then format them for Mac, and then retransfer the files. Now, here's the thing. You probably guys know that XFAC is a format that allows a hard drive to be seen and used on both Mac and PC. Apparently, with Sonoma, which is the latest uh, Mac OS, these XFAT drives have problems, and I can attest because that's what happened to me. I would grab my external drive, plug them into the computer, and they were seen. I started transferring files, and two things happened. One, after probably 20 hours or so, the external XFAT drive stopped working. The computer was not seeing it, or better. It was seeing it, but it was seeing it now as a no name, and I couldn't even open the disk utility unless I unplugged that drive. So that was a problem because, of course, I had still had files in there that needed to be copied. And so at first I thought the hard drive could have a problem, like physical problem. So I put it aside for a second, grabbed another one, a Seagate USB drive, which was XFAC, did the same thing. It worked until I turned the Mac off. I turned the Mac back on and the hard drive did the same. So I researched and apparently there is a problem with Sonoma and XFAT uh, drives. They don't see it, they see it until you turn the computer off and if you don't unmount it, when you turn the computer back on, it doesn't see it anymore. So fortunately, I had all redundancy for my files and my projects. So it was a long project of basically reformatting the drives and then move them around. And this operation of transferring files and reformatting hard drives was the longest and the most painful operation in this whole big switch from Windows to Mac. If I didn't have this problem, the whole thing would have probably took only three days 
thanks to Trav's app, and uh, and that would be it. This is day A. <laughs> I'm still transferring files because, of course, the big drives are like 16 terabyte each, and I have two of them. They are almost like not full, but halfway, and then the redundancy. So it's taking a long time just to transfer file and just to um, reformat the hard drives for Mac. So be aware, as far as I know, so far at the time of this video, don't use XFAT drives on your Mac externally or internally even less because even if it sees it at first, then it won't see it after a while or if you turn the computer off apparently without unmounting it first and then you have to remount it. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room, price, because that is, we can say, the biggest argument between Mac users, Mac supporters, and Windows and PC supporters. A lot of people, me included, always said Mac are overpriced. For the same amount of money or less, you can build a much more powerful computer, right? And I feel that at some point in the past, that was true. Today, no way in hell. <laughs> First of all, because Intel, in my opinion, completely fucked up. Like, they just fucked up. At this point in time, it's it's an absolute mess. The second thing, though, is it's true that this Mac wasn't cheap, right? With my specs, it was, and taxes and shipping, it was almost 6K. So it was like, I think, 5,700 or 800, something like that, okay? So we agree that that's not chump change money, okay? Although this is my livelihood, this is my job, and this is my main computer. I don't bat an eye if I have to spend, you know, this amount of money because that's that's my livelihood. Okay, so uh, that was fine. But just like I didn't look at the price tag when I built the PC, all right? I bought the top of the line specs. But let's analyze this. I'm the kind of guy that if I get premium, I will happily pay premium. I get pissed if I pay premium or almost premium, and I get bottom of the barrel borderline unacceptable performances, right? So I don't mind paying a lot if I get a good product, a premium product, a superior product, not one bit. The super spec DAO PC turned out to be around like probably $3,000, 3,000 and something, okay? So almost half of the price. When we pay five plus K for this, what are we paying for, right? This is what I, ask myself before doing this video. I'm paying for an extremely powerful machine that utilizes the power efficiently. Take for example my car, right? My car is like super like stupid powerful, right? But I have no traction until 60, 70 miles an hour, right? I can't even think of flooring it or going past half throttle, which means if I were to race from a dig with a car that has half my horsepower, like four or 500 horsepower, I'll probably lose because of that. The Mac is a car that is extremely powerful, but has all the traction as well, right? And can utilize it. And also I'm paying for an extremely quiet machine. We also pay for, first of all, a pre-built unit, which you can buy a, a PC that is pre-built. But most people, they use PC, either build it themselves or they want to change something, they want to change parts. And that was also the argument forever between PC users and Mac. Mac, this M2 Ultra is the same all around the world. That means that there's a much easier testing that's a much easier compatibility schedule, right? Even though the OS is a problem, blah, blah, blah. The PCs, you gotta nail the right combination, which I repeat, I was maybe lucky, but I did for the past 20 years. My PCs never had any issues until now though. This one was a freaking mess. And also in this PC build, the craziest stuff happened, like a Seasonic top of the line power supply was dead on arrival, unheard of, but it happened. So that made me lose another week because the last thing I thought was a problem would be the power supply. When I finished the build, I tried to turn it on and the CPU flashed. So we changed the CPU, it wasn't that. We changed the motherboard, it wasn't that. We changed the RAM, it wasn't that. It turned out it was the power supply. So you don't have these issues, it arrives, you press power, turns on. And at this point, especially my career, I don't, you know, if it's a two days fun thing, I can do it. If it's more than that and it's, it starts becoming a problem, I can't. 
I don't have time, I'm losing money. If I do that, that that's not, it's not an option at, at all. With Mac, you also pay for seamless integration with other devices, which I don't have an iPhone, I don't care, but I can see the value in it, right? Because my friend Keith and Trav, like, they told me a couple of things that were like interesting, like you can uh, copy and use the clipboard on your computer and your phone at the same time. like. It's cool, right? You can control things, you can access files. It sounds like a cool thing. Now, for example, I can connect my Android phone wireless just and transfer file and do the same thing. So the kind of impression that I had, it was wrong, right? That it was always gonna be a pain in the ass to connect and, and make communicate any other devices that wasn't Apple. And probably in some cases that's the case because Apple wants you to use their stuff. That's known. But so far, so good. Also, you pay a premium because, let's face it, there's no competition. There's not an equivalent to Mac computers, right? So this kind of closed architecture that is tested and proven with this kind of performance, because I, I said it before, on paper, you could make a PC that has more cores and more this and more that. I did it. It just doesn't translate. That power that is on paper, it does not translate because it's not utilized or it gets too hot or it, it is, it's just a problem after problem. And it didn't used to be like this for Intel because like I said, I didn't have problems before. But at this time, performance is off the charts with the Mac. So you somehow pay also for the exclusivity but if I was Apple, I would do it too. <laughs> you would do it too. If you have a product that is so good that you don't have basically no competition, you will bump the price a little bit. Is it ethical? No, it's kind of shitty. Even because this was shipped from China. I bought it on the Apple store and it's literally shipped from China. So it is what it is, but the product works and delivers. And that's all I care. Even if I had to pay a thousand more, I would have at that point. Because all I care in my studio is not to worry about problems because I got a mix, I got a master. That's the only thing I have to worry about. The technicality of it, it cannot interfere, all right? Otherwise I lose time, I lose time, I lose money. And it just is not a smooth process anymore. With that said, there are things that are slightly overpriced, for example, for me to go from one terabyte to four terabyte of internal memory on the hard drive, it was an extra thousand dollars. <laughs> you know that three terabytes do not cost a thousand dollars, do not cost 500, probably do not cost a, a hundred either. But again, this is kind of a position of power and leverage that the brand has. So if you want four terabytes, you are going to overpay it. Do you need it? Did I need it? Yeah, yeah, I needed it. So it is what it is. I was like, dang, that is a lot for three terabytes when I can buy like hard drives of 16 terabytes, even fast ones for like two, $300, but that's part of the brand. And like I said, the operating system, I'm actually liking it the more I use it. I don't miss Windows. Um, the shortcuts on Pro Tools are like so close that it took me literally probably 30 minutes spending on a project and I, my, my shortcut were the same. I had the same fluidity, the same speed. And one thing that I noticed though, and I'm curious if there are more things like that. And for Mac users, this is gonna be normal, but coming from a PC, that was a big of a surprise because what happened at some point is that I opened a project, it was one of Bella's mixes, and I noticed when it was loading that it stopped on a snare track on a, actually on a snare reverb, right? And so you got stuck there for a minute. And mind you, this was after I installed a bunch of freaking things. So I probably clogged it or something, but it stopped. So I had to force quit it and I force quit Pro Tools and I reopen it. And when I reopen it, it told me that the program stopped because of this plugin. It was the TC8210 reverb. And I was like, Windows doesn't do that. It doesn't tell me, it happened to me a million times and I'm pretty sure you too. You open a project and some plugin, it gets stuck there and Pro Tools won't move. You had to force it, you force close it and either you reopen it, uh, bypassing all the plugins and then you open one by one and see which one it is or it's gonna be a problem. Like you, you try and try until it opens, right? It doesn't tell, Windows doesn't tell you which plugin is the problem. 
that is a bit that is it might might sound stupid but it's a big deal because when this happened us windows user we had to figure it out this one tells you tells you like it was this plugin so all i did was uninstall it reinstall it and it opened fine done no problem so I'm, i wonder how many other little things like this there are and um yeah moto interfaces thunderbolt connected scene immediately hubs drives everything all absolutely perfect which is another uh thing that with uh windows usb it was always a little you know finicky it was always a, a problem and it was never very stable it would lose connection and i'm not talking about interfaces i'm talking about sometimes the mouse stopped working or the whatever usb thing you had connected and you had to like go and clean the old usb devices attached to it refresh the ports and everything and maybe it happened on on apple too and this is a brand new computer but so far let's say when i build a new pc there's always some problem uh, with the usb ports and, and something even in my best builds this one was like an absolutely smooth project so at the end of the day the money that i that this computer cost for me repaid themselves after the day number three because of how smooth everything is and uh how seamless everything connected and how much power and a quiet system this is so for me it was totally worth it and i want to say at this point in time i would not go with a high spec pc maybe if you need just a powerful computer or maybe a powerful laptop creative devices the one that i have it's perfect it's amazing i can't run my entire studio in it or five interfaces plus the mastering rig and switch things on a laptop that's unthinkable right for a studio like mine i need a desktop but right now you might think you save a little bit of money but you're not you're gonna regret it and you wish you did you know follow my advice and like i did wish i followed my friend's advice before uh, without you know going through the spec pc this time around i should have avoided that because all the rumors were true the, the this gen of processors is an absolute mess intel pushed thing so far that the 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 cooling is a problem that everything is a problem and everything is clunky and at this point i don't think it's worth anymore maybe we'll see in three five years and you know i'll update this the first time that i have to update the os which <laughs> i hope is not gonna come anytime soon and everything but um yeah i think this is it if you have any questions leave them in the comments down below i'll try to answer them all if you like the video please don't forget to leave a like please go watch and share the new video bella kelly's felony i mean of course playing guitar and uh, let me know if you want to know something about that mix go to the website mixbestv.com to book mix and mastering with me get all the mix and mastering courses private lesson mix consultations click the join button become a mixbest tv member to access all the exclusive videos thank you for watching subscribe if you haven't already stay safe see you next time